Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect. This is DDP back with a short recap on Dallas's 108-85 victory the other night. Look, coming into this game, even though Dallas was coming off of uh, a disappointing loss against Houston, I know one particular person who cannot help himself in my videos that will be extremely happy about that, by the way. Dallas had some reason, I thought, for positivity. Yeah, that was a bad loss against Houston. But even still, as Luca said after the game, he felt like in the fourth quarter, he started to shake off some of that early season rust. Well, if it looked like that was happening in that particular game, I think that rang true in the matchup with Orlando last night because Dallas doesn't just blow the doors off 108-85 at the AAC. But Lucas drops 25 in the first half. I think his exact, exact stat line was like 25 points, four boards, three assists at the half. Now he ends with 32, but it's because Dallas is basically up the entire game. Like they were chasing for most of that first quarter. They end up finally taking the lead late in that first quarter. Luca ends the first quarter with that and one. And then by the time we hit the waning minutes of the second quarter, Dallas is already up like 30. They've already secured firm control of this game. And then Luca just decides, I'm going to go thermonuclear on your ass. So Luca dropping logo threes, getting and ones, just absolutely raining in from all directions, firmly puts this game out of reach. But what really impressed me with Dallas was the defensive turnaround. Yes, Luca going for 25 in the first half is huge, but they give up 22 points in the first quarter. Again, Early on, looked like it was going to be a lot more points than that in the first quarter, but they battened down the hatches, worm their way in to the point where they're up 30-22 to 22 at, the, uh, at the end of the first. In the second quarter, they pretty much double up Orlando, 35-18 to 18 in that second quarter, and it makes the rest of the game kind of a moot point. Now, Luca still played you know, through the third quarter and all of that, still got a little bit more, but he wasn't really pressing. He wasn't searching, and that's what I loved about this game for Dallas is that Luca didn't just come out and say, like, bro, I'm on a heater. I'm just going to get as many points as I want. That's, to me, the difference of some of these very, very good and great players. A guy who has a huge game wants to come out and just put on a weeks-long, sometimes months-long, or even seasons-long scoring barrage and campaign. We saw that with... Uh, Russell Westbrook posts Kevin Durant in Oklahoma City. We saw that with James Harden when he was in Houston for all of those years. These guys who basically try to just rack up as many offensive accolades as they can, and it doesn't necessarily matter if it was the most constructive way to go in it, uh, go about these wins, or if it helped the team in a broader sense. It was about their glory and everything else following from there. That is not the case for Luka. He's had a 71-point game at this point. He's not hooked on this notion of, I've got to drop a shit ton of points. Luka only goes for seven in the second half, and overall, he still shot 11 of 22 from the field, five of 13 from three, so it's not like it was a heater, but even still, much better than the roughly 29% he was shooting prior to this game. His three-point shot in particular had been ice cold, and that's why some people kind of got their pennies in a knot when uh, Clay Thompson referred to Luca as his new splash brother. I understand some people are Golden State fans are going to be particularly upset about that. Like, how could you anoint him that? And he's only shooting 29% as if we don't know the full body of work. Miss me with that. Even still, Luca, a much better game here from that standpoint. Didn't press, didn't overexert. He only plays 32 minutes because it's a blowout win. So 32 and 32, I'll take it. Clay Thompson, speaking of which, He's got another ho-hum game, if you look at it. You're saying 29 minutes, 9 points, 5 boards, 4 assists. Only 1 of 5 from 3, and even that one make was on kind of a broken play from Orlando. They get caught sleeping, and they're not in position. Dallas inbounds the ball, and it's just like, oh, shit, here's Clay Thompson. Hits you with that, easy money. Not exactly your, your typical foundation here, not how you typically operate. But the reason I'm so invested in this particular Situ situation for Dallas is Clay creating off the dribble, hitting pull up shots, hitting falling away bank shots off the window, off the glass. Beautiful. It's not just as simple as just catch and shoot, catch and shoot, catch and shoot. That's great, right? We used to talk about stats for Clay Thompson where it was like he had more made threes than dribbles in the game. 
that's a whole different era of Clay Thompson and, you know, with that Warriors offense. You didn't have that here. He had to work for this. And I think in the long run, having to work a little bit for some of these buckets is good. You know, he's four of 10 from the field, so he's not blowing you away. But the buckets he got were really nice buckets. And even more, he turned down other three-point opportunities that were there. Situations where Lively, uh, in the third quarter, I think it was, is going for just an absolute obliteration poster dunk on a guy. He doesn't get it. Ball bounces right out to Clay, who could easily load up the three, the quick trigger three if he wants. Pump fakes, gets the guy to blow by, he could load it up again. Chooses not to. Instead, he takes one dribble inside that to get past his man, kicks it to Lively again, rolling in from that low block, and sets up Lively for the Shaq style dunk. I love that because it's getting the young guy, keeping him involved, right? Like, he's looking at it and saying, like, dude, I don't need to score a bucket here. I don't need another three. Everyone knows who I am, what my gravity is, what my ability is. But keeping this young guy involved, this second year player, who just got a moment of like brash boldness and tried to really capitalize on it. I didn't necessarily develop like he wanted. So rather than let that limit him in any sort of way, you know, even just to make him a little scared to try it again necessarily if he, if he gets the opportunity like a couple plays later, I'm going to feed him for another one and let, make sure he ends this possession with that absolute rim-rocking dunk. So now Lively is going to come in and he's going to feed off of that coming in. It's also just how you build that rapport. So I love the response there. Looking elsewhere, uh, Kyrie, 28 minutes, 17 points, 5 of 11 from the field. Only took two threes, one of two. I like that. I respect that. Gafford, this was a big bounce back for him and Lively. I'm not going to get into the Houston game, but again, not great for them in particular uh, in that game. So Gafford having 20 minutes, 18 points, and eight boards on 9 of 13 from the field. Love it. Uh, I love Lively as well, getting another double-double, 11 points, 11 boards, 5 of 7 from the field. Thought that was great for him as well. One of these guys I want to shout out in particular, uh, Najee Marshall. I, I've been saying I, I feel like something's coming for him. We saw that defensive play he made at the end of the Minnesota game to ice that win. And defensively, he's been really sound. But some things I didn't necessarily take into consideration with him. Now, he's still just 21 minutes, 4 points, 5 boards, 5 assists. But it's the five assists I want to talk about. Because until this was put into context for me after the game, I didn't realize until I saw it from Landon Thomas that Najee Marshall is also averaging three-plus assists per game. Last year for the Mavericks, only Luka and Kyrie did that. This year, it's Luka, it's Kyrie, and it's Najee Marshall. Now, that might not sound like much, right? Like one of those was hitting Luca for a transition wide open logo three, which Luca's on a burner. So, yeah, that's an easy one. But the cojones and the audacity for him, for him to throw a half court transition alley oop through traffic to Daniel Gafford was just like, oh, okay, wow. That, that was pretty awesome. And even then, I, I, was just, I was like, man, that was, that was really nice. Yeah, I guess he's a better passer than I gave him credit for. Luca then talking after the game says, uh, regarding Najee Marshall, says, I love his game. Always liked him, even when he was in New Orleans. He's a very complete player. He can guard, bring the ball up, shoot, and drive. Again, we haven't seen the shooting yet, but I think it will come with time. He's adjusting to a new team and will just keep getting better. Marshall's passing ability... I definitely slept on that. I was thinking in terms of his defense. I was thinking in terms of his three-point shooting, his ability to create a little bit for himself. And I, I saw those, and I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. And again, it's the contract you were trying to give to Derek Jones Jr., so okay, I like it. It's a different style of player, but I still think this is a very, very solid signing. Understanding that aspect of the game now is kind of like, oh, that, that is significant at that point then. So absolutely absolutely love what uh he's able to bring to this team and i think it's only going to get better and better with passing opportunities now i mentioned earlier Derek lively recorded a double double it's his only it, and this surprised me because it's like saying only it's only his 10th career double double and it's his second of this season overall in those games the mavericks are eight and two including two and oh this year so a little surprising. Uh, again, he, we, we think of him in the force he was in the playoffs last year, and it's kind of easy to forget. Like, it's not like he averages a double-double. It's not like he's doing this every single night. But I think there will come a time in his career where like, that's just that's standard business. Like, 
not like, oh, every single game you expect at least a double-double, but where he's going to be flirting with it every single game, I think is going to be much more commonplace as we move forward. But still, a uh, nice moment for him there. Um, and I believe he got that double-double on that feed from Clay for that thunderous dunk I mentioned earlier. Other notes here from uh, Landon Thomas. Luka Doncic now takes sole possession of ninth place for most career 35-5 and five games in NBA history with 161. This moves him past Giannis Antetokounmpo and Jerry West, who both had 160. So 30 points, 5 boards, 5 assists. Luka is now top 10, sole possession of number 9, I should say, all time. That is pretty special, I think. And again, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, this guy's, what, like 26? <laughs> he should just now be starting to scratch the start of his proper prime, and he's already got all these accolades. Like, it's insane. Uh, health permitting this dude's future and how he's going to rewrite record books is just going to be staggering and a, and a thing of beauty to see. I like this point from TGK. Um, he points out that uh, usually Daniel Gafford is great with the starters. However, a note in this game, that wasn't the case. In this game, you had uh, kind of a reversal of that role. You also had a big lineup of Luca, Clay, Najee, PJ, and Gafford. Um, less minutes, but played very solid there. Like the impact was solid. So I love, love overall TGK, man. Give him support. The uh, unofficial post game, sorry, pre game show, pre game show. I'm in post game mode, so that's what I was thinking here. But uh, TGK, give his channel all the support because he does incredible work uh, with what he's doing and the stats and insights and all that. Love it. So yeah, uh, expounding on this here, your plus minus normally with Gafford is fantastic, as he points out. It was kind of inverted for this one particular game, even though Gafford's stat line was very nice. We'll see if that's something of a, a greater trend to keep an eye on, but for now, for why we've been in this kind of position we've been in, the plus minus of Gafford with the starters has been sizably stronger of the two, it just looking at pure plus minus standpoint than lively. So we'll see if there's a greater trend that develops from this now. Any other closing notes I wanted to get to here? Landon Thomas, again, I'm giving him a lot of love today. That's just coincidental stuff because uh, he just had a lot of great tweets and insights after the game, obviously reporting on the game uh, there in the post-game press conference with Gafford. He asked specifically how he and Lively were able to get kind of in the right mindset for a bounce-back performance after that Houston game. And Gafford said that both he and Lively worked with Tyson Chandler on their screen setting, ways to impact the game without the ball in their hands, and just how to be more effective and decisive with the ball. We know the strengths of these guys. We know that they have that ability too. But it's one of those things, again, just the, the underrated facet of having a guy like Tyson Chandler with your team and the impact you're able to have with that. But that's going to wrap up this post-game video here for the Mavericks. Again, a little bit of a different one, just kind of reflecting on the game in itself, hitting a couple pure notes that I wanted to touch on from the post-game stuff, the great work that other Mavs content creators do, other Mavs reporters like Thomas do. But yeah, let me know. What, what do you think? How did you feel about the win last night? Do you feel like Luka is now locked in through the rust and now it's going to start getting real fun and real interesting? Or do you think this was just Orlando kind of being in a tough spot? I really don't like their chances now, by the way, because now they have to go to Oklahoma City and play the top defense uh, after all that, plus all the, the weather headache of that flight for them from Dallas to OKC last night that I was reading about this morning. So good luck to them. But let me know in the comments where are we at here, how are we feeling at this juncture of the season for the Mavericks. Don't forget to like the video, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. Until next time, guys, I've been DDP, and I want you to remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!